Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking on an exciting project, creating a sleek split landing page featuring the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. These consoles are all the rage right now, I can't even get my hands on a PS5. Imagine having a store where you can pick between these two gaming powerhouses. Here's what we'll be crafting. A stunning split screen layout with dynamic background images and stylish overlays. Engaging content in each section that grabs attention. An interactive design where clicking or hovering on one side expands it to 75% while the other shrinks to 25%. We'll focus heavily on CSS for this design with a touch of JavaScript at the end for those smooth hover effects. It's going to be a visually appealing and functional landing page. If you're interested in more projects like this, don't forget to check out our 100 projects in 100 days playlist. And if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Let's dive in and build this awesome landing page together. I've never felt so alive in my life as you make me Okay, so we're going to get started now. This project is very CSS heavy. That's what we're going to mostly be focusing on. We do need to add some JavaScript to have the cover effect, but a lot of this is going to be style. So the HTML is actually going to be really simple. Let's just jump right in here. Both of these are going to have a class of split, and this one will be the left, so we'll also get the class of left. And then here will be the H1, PlayStation 5, definitely my choice. And then we'll have a, a, a link formatted with the button, so we're going to give this a class of BGN. It's not going to actually go anywhere. And then for the text in here, we're going to say five now. Okay, and then what we'll do is just copy this. This whole div right here, we're going to copy that down. And just change this to the right. This is the right side. And then change this to the next box. Series X. And find that. And that's it. So very simple HTML. It's going to look like this. Jump into our style sheet. We're going to use the Roboto font. We're going to keep that. And then for the body, we want to use flex, so I'm going to use flex. So I'm trying to figure out what style is. Let's do the, the, the content last, like the heading and the body. So let's start with the container wraps around everything. We want to position that to be relative and we want that to have a width of 100% and a height of 100% and then the background set that to 333 which is dark and this space up here is from the the um, margin on the heading now for the split, remember both sides have a class of split. So we're gonna position the split absolute within the container and the width is gonna be 50%. So each one will be 50%, the height will be 100%, and the overflow we want that to be hidden. Let's do this the left side. So we'll say split and we to target the left side. So the left. I'm going to set from the left zero. And look at the background. It's going to be URL. Now, I didn't actually bring the images into this yet, so I'm just going to grab these. And you can get these uh, in the repository. And of course, you can use any images that you want. I'm just going to bring these over. So we have the PS5, we have the Xbox, the two images that I'm using. Um, the left side is going to be the PS5. So in here, let's PS dot As you can see the background, we're going to add an overlay to each side. So we have the background, and then. 
just want to set the background. Say background repeat. I'm going to set to no repeat and background size. I'm going to set to cover. So that's good. Now for the overlay. Actually, let's do the right first. Split the class right. And you want to position that on the right side, so from the right, zero. And let's add the background. So background is going to be URL, and it's going to be Xbox, JPEG. Set background. So background repeat will be no repeat, and let's set background size. Save that. Now we have both images side by side. So now we'll go ahead and do the overlays. So we'll start with the left overlay. We're going to use split left and then do the four suits. Full of four, four. And we're essentially styling, you think of it as a ghost element that we're going to place over the left side. So when we use before or after, we have to use the content property. So we're just going to put an empty string for that. Then we want to position this to be absolute. Width, 100% of the container, so the height, that's also going to be 100%. And then we want the overlay, which is going to be a background color. Um, now I'm going to I'm going to put this in a custom property or a variable, just so it's easy to change. So let's do var. And we'll call this dash dash left dash B. All I need is ten more minutes, ten more minutes with you. Let's go up to the top here. Let me give it all one last time. Will I ever get through to you? Dash dash. Should I leave for the night? It's unclear at the moment. Dash color. And it's going to be RGBA, which is the alpha because we need to have some transparency so we can see the image behind it. So the color is going to be a bluish color, so 87 for red, 84 for green, and 236 for blue, and then for the alpha value, it's 0.7. Let's go ahead and save that, and then you can see we have this blue overlay. And while we're at it, we might as well do the right overlay. So It's going, to be, it's going to be a little lighter than black, so we're going to be 43 for red, green, and blue. And then for the alpha value, let's do 0.3. And we're going to go down here, and we have our split left before. I'm just going to grab that and go under the right here. This to split dot right. Yeah, I just wanna go back now home. Can't do right this side. anymore. I can't get through the use of what the fuck am I fighting for? What all those rumors do? Oh, are you trying to get a rise out of me? Color a rise out of me. Right. Oh, I don't wanna make it all about me again. Alright, so that's the thing good now. Let's style the, the content now that's inside of it. So we have the text, the H1 and the button that we want to style. So let's do the H1 first. I'm going to put that right here. H1. I'm going to increase the font size. Let's do four rounds. So let me know if you give up hope. Don't leave you alone. I'll leave you alone. So let me know if you give up hope. I know. Absolute. It's going to be position absolute on its whatever side here. We want each one to be in the middle. So we'll do Now if I do that, it's going to put the beginning of the H1 right in the middle. And that's not what I want. I want the middle of the H1 in the middle of the, of the side. So to do that, we just need to add Transform. And we're going to transform on the translate x and move it on the x-axis, negative 50%. And now it's going to put it 
you know, right in the middle. Now, I don't want them to go on the next line. I don't want this to wrap, even if this is smaller. Like if I span, span this out, it's on one line. But even if it's smaller like this, I don't want it to wrap. So we need to spe set the white space property. So let's say white space, and we're gonna set that to no wrap. So now, even if, you know, even if it's like that, it's still not gonna wrap, which is what I want. Okay, so that's the H1. And now I think what we'll do is style the button, and then in the next video, we'll, we'll do the hover stuff and add our JavaScript and the rest of the CSS. But let's style the button, so that has a class of BTN. First thing I'm going to do here is position it. So let's say position absolute. So I'm going to position the absolute within its container, within its side. And we want it to be in the middle, so let's say left 50%. And let's do from the top, let's say 40%. Now that's going to put the beginning of it in the middle, right? So this here, we want the middle in the middle, so we're going to kind of transform. Form and then translate x negative 50%. I'm going to put it right in the middle. And then let's take away that underline. So text decoration is going to be none. And then the color is going to be white. And I'm going to add a border of white. So solid. And the, the width I'm going to use a rem unit. So I'm just 0.2 for the width, border, let's make the font size, we'll do one rem for the font size, and then for the width of the button, we'll do 15 rem, and then let's add padding of 1.5 rem, and then we want the, the text to be in the middle, so what I'm going to do is actually display Flex, and then we'll align items center and justify content center. And let's also make it bold. So, let's see, right on the font size, we'll say font weight. And we'll set that to bold. And I want it to be uppercase as well. So, we'll text transform into uppercase. far as the button size. Now we do want to have yeah, we do want to have uh, a background color when we hover over these. So let's actually define that as a variable here so those can be mentioned. So we'll say dash dash left do left or BTN. So left BTN dash hover dash color and that's actually going to be the same as this except no transparency so instead of 0 0.7 for the alpha value we'll do 1 alright and then for the right let's say right button hover and that's going to be something different it's going to be an xbox green which is 28 Now we can go down here to the button. And let's add, let's say split left dot btn hover. And we want to set the background, let's say background color. We're going to set that to the variable with a custom property of dash dash left button hover color. And the border color, because it has a white border by default, I actually want the border to be the same as this as well, so let's change the border color to that. So if I go over and I hover, nothing's happening. What I do? Split. Split left button hover. I get lost sometimes and I can't seem to find a light between. 
Now we get that blue hover. And you show me love All right, and then we'll do the same for the right before. side. So let's just grab that. And I got you, it's all gonna be alright. Right. Thinking about all the things we did tonight. What a time to be alive. And just this you and I. Well, so you we'll go here and get that Xbox screen. In the next video, we have a little bit more CSS to fight. We have to handle how wide we want to go with the cover. And of course, we have to add the cover effect by adding a few adding a new class. So we're going to do that in the next video. Okay, so now we want to start to be able to cover effect. We want to cover on this side. On the left, it's going to spread out. The width will be wider. Same thing with the cover over here. So I'm going to manually just add on the, on the container, I did with the classic container, I'm going to add hover left and save that just so we can style it and see what we're doing. So let's say for the class of hover dash left, when, that, when that's active, then we want to take the left side and we want to increase the width. And this is going to be in a, a custom property or a variable called hover dash width. Now at the same time, when, when hover left is active, the right side is going to be smaller. So we then want to set that width to a variable called other width. And then we'll go up here and we'll set those variables. So when I say variables are custom properties. So dash dash. Cover dash width is going to be 75%. You can change this ratio if you want. So other width is going to be 25%. Now if I save that, cover left is applied to this to the container, so the left side is now wider, 75%, and the other side is 25. Now at the same time, let's copy these two lines and say if cover right is applied, then we want the right side to be cover width. And then down here, if cover right is applied, we want the left side to be the other one. So now, if I go and I apply here, right, and save, now this side is right. And that's exactly what we want. Now, I am going to add the JavaScript now so that this gets added dynamically instead of us having to actually in here. So now it's going to look back to normal. And if we go into our JavaScript here, let's bring in the left side. So const left, I'm going to use document.query selector. And we want to select the class of left. All I down need is 10 more minutes, right 10 side. more minutes with you. Right. We also want to grab the container because that's where we're adding the class and removing the container. And then we take the left and we add an event listener and then add the event listener. This time we will see on the mouse enter event, which is the so let me know if you give up or do it. And then when that happens, we're going to follow the arrow function and so let me know if you give up or do it. And then we're going to follow the arrow Take the container and we're gonna call class list dot add add a class. And then we have the class cover dash left. And just dynamically doing what I just manually do in the case. Now if I save this and I go and cover over it, you can see that it gets wider, it just stays there. We need to take care of removing it as well. So we'll say left add event In, it gets wider and it gets fixed. We want to do the same for the right, so I'm just going to copy that. Yeah, I just want to go back home. Can't do this anymore. I can't get through to you, so what the fuck am I fighting for? What all those rumors do? Oh, are you trying to get a rise out of me? A rise out of me. Most of the right, it's going to add the right. Now I can go on either side. Now it's just flicking back and forth in the like, so we just want to add a, a smooth CSS transition. So we just need to take the right, 
split right, split dash left. Let's also grab the pseudo selector, split, split dot right, colon, colon, four. Split, so let me know left. if you gave up hope. Do I leave you alone or I leave you alone? So let me know if you gave up hope by now. So transition. That way you can just change it here. Speed is going to be 1000 ms, so 1000 milliseconds per second. And now, it looks like the overlay. Split. Uh -huh. split dash left. It should be split dot left. So the overlay was working, but the actual left wasn't. So now, you can see that it's working. So it looks pretty good. The last thing I want to do is on smaller screens, like under 800, I want to just make the H1 smaller and the button smaller. So let's add a medium Thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this project, and I will see you next time.